So may I request brother John Ngede, if you are with us, pray with us. Okay, buenas fesana. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for the gift of life and more so even for an opportunity like this one that Lord be can be gathered as Kate KSF. Lord, as we are reminded of the noble task that uh, is always in our hand, this far you have uh, brought us, you have seen us visit schools, you have seen us even organize different activities from LTD to Larry's and visitation, even our own interaction as uh, members of the kit. We wanted to be able to hear today from our brother, the Secretary General, even as we think about how we can organize, coordinate, plan, raise funds, even for comes for our student. A time like this one, when we are experiencing challenges in our schools all over the country, our prayer, oh God, is that this ministry will be part of the solution that transforms and changes the lives of many young people. We want to thank you for Utah, even as uh, he coordinates. We want to thank you for the speaker of the day. And we thank you, Lord, even for each and everyone that is joining. Some could be visitors and others also Oganda old members. Particularly, we are grateful because of the diversity of the members of this team. May your presence be with us, Lord, as we progress. We pray that, Lord, all will be well in terms of networks, in terms of uh, power, that, Lord, we may have a successful meeting today. We thank you and we bless you for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Karibu sana, GS. The floor is yours. Please proceed. Yes, thank you so much. Uh... Brother Gitao and the team kindly confirm if, if I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. That's we thank God for a, that we are meeting. I think for the first time, the team has asked us to train on how to organize a camp, a KCF camp. And I think it is a great need even in our fellowship for us to think through how best we can organize our camps and how effective those camps can be and uh, we felt as the office when we got this to extend invitation to other teams to join that's why we you hear people from Nairobi are here engineer Kabubo uh, you are hearing somebody from people from Bungoma from Kuale, I can see brethren, uh, also from Baringo, and maybe others could join even as we continue. But I thought it was a very, very, uh, a very, very important topic and discussion that we can have. The month of August, we held up to 36 camps spread across the nation. And we felt that was a big, big plus for us, uh, meaning the fellowship is revived. And we expect uh, counties and teams that did not organize a camp this in the month of uh, month of August to do the same uh, uh, in the month of November, December. And that's why I'm also glad to hear that a camp is being organized. Uh, in TRT. And thank you, Baringo team, for thinking about that. And God bless you. And those comes at the highest at 2,100 students. Uh, the camps this time experienced an explosion. Total number of delegates we reached in the month of August were close to uh, slightly above 22,000 people. And this combined children, students, associates, and JSS. And we believe that the students which who are reached during the convention at the camps during uh, August 
uh, are now actively involved in running the affairs of the, of the schools, or the CU in their schools. So what we want to look, so thank you so much, Kit and our team for thinking about this. Uh, we hope and trust that your camps will be successful, even as the IRST were. So this is going to be a training guide for running KCF camps. And this we were thinking of the, at the county levels or at the regional level. And so I was given this topic in form of questions. So I have tried to structure the questions and answer them. So by the end, there are about 17 questions I'm going to answer. And then we'll open for discussion. Any question, any comment will be very important for you to get involved in this. Uh, KCF comes at transformational experiences that go beyond normal schooling. That's what you are saying. That it's not just a schoolwork. You are living, helping students to go beyond the school life. That's what our our camps are. And why is it important in a student's life? It is important because they offer spiritual growth. Students encounter God through worship, prayer, and biblical teaching. So one way to ensure students are growing spiritually is to organize those camps. That's why those camps are quite important. These camps are also ven avenues or developing student leadership. That student leaders in a camp, uh, these camps will foster Christian leadership. They, do, they grow in skills, empowering students to lead in schools, even in their families. So ACF camps are important because it is the avenue where we develop the students into leaders. And it is, we're going to see why KCF camp is different from church camps and other ministries. It also offer an avenue for fellowship and networking. Students bond, they build friendship. So students meet fellow Christian students and this helps them to build network of support and accountability. I think I, I my daughter attended camps since she was in class four. A majority of the friends she has today are those she built during those camps, a network of young people. And then those camps offer practical Christian living for the students. That camps provide a safe space for students to discuss real life challenges and how to live out their Christian faith. That's very, very important. But number two, how is KCF camp different from a church or youth camp? Number one is the focused audience. You know, if you go to a youth, a youth camp in your church, I was talking to a youth camp. I talked to youth camps in churches. And they tell you that the children, they target at 13 years to 35 years. So I was talking to in, in a youth camp where we had high school students, we had university students, and we had youth who were working. They were 30, 30, between 30 to 35. That's not our camp. Our camp focus, or they are designed specifically for high school students uh, with tailored content and activities relevant to, to their needs. So that's what that's the number one thing that differentiates a KCF camp. So when I hear associates tell me that, you know, December churches are organizing camps, KCF should not organize a camp, you've not understood that this, the church camps may not reach the students' needs because they are targeting varied people, working class, people in the university, and therefore you cannot reach the teenagers well and effectively in a church setup. Uh, and then number two, it is school ministry focus. 
you know, I came to 17 camps, out of 36 camps. And the focus we were doing when we came to the camps, we were training teachers on what we were calling a teacher as a disciple and a discipler. And we were saying why many teachers and many Christians are not disciples. And in the process, we differentiated between high school ministry, youth ministry, and church ministry. They're not the same. So while church camps often focus on the congregation, KCF camps prepare students to be witnesses for Christ in their school environment. That's the real difference, that we are producing students who will go back to their schools and practice what they have been taught among their fellow peers. That the end product of your account, there need to be a monitoring and evaluation system. And I think at the end of this, we'll be developing how do you, after the camp, a camp had 2,000, another camp had around 1,700, another camp 1,600, another camp in 200. So after the camp, what? Do we able to monitor and find out from you see patrons, from chaplains, how the students who came to our camp are living differently? Uh, so school ministry focus is that we are producing students who are going to be outside there among their peers and deliver on what they have been taught. And then there's peer leadership, <clears throat> what we are calling peer-to-peer -peer ministry. KCF emphasizes peer-to-peer -peer ministry, where students lead and minister to each other under the guidance of the CU patron. So we believe that young people can do ministry in their school. Church ministry is one macho man. They start at oriented. What they do is that the pastor is one person who preaches every day and runs the activities of the church. In our ministry, we are not the actors. The main actors is to equip students. And that's why the peer-to-peer -peer program or peer-to-peer -peer ministry must be part and parcel of your account because that's where the students learn from each other. They share and they learn the skills they can apply when they go back to schools. They can learn the skills in the gathering when you have a camp where the plenary from morning to evening, little learning takes place in such a scenario. Even if students shout for two hours and the speaker excites them for two hours, they learn very little. But power and real learning takes in their small groups. And that's why peer to peer ministry is key in any KCF camp. Discipleship, the focus is not just on spiritual renewal, but on equipping students to disciple others in their schools and Christian unions. And that's why it was important for us to talk to teachers about they becoming disciples and then making. Uh, and then we are showing them how to make disciples in a school setup. And what we found out that not many Christians are disciples. So the first thing is a Christian can be a preacher, can be a bishop, can be a pastor. But that's not a disciple. Because a disciple is a process, very intentional. And what we want to see in a school is students being able to disciple students. And if we, we can quote, we can mention a number of schools which are practicing this. It is working. So your camp must, the, the real evidence of your camp, are students leaving your hand after the five days, three days, equipped enough to go back. And that's why we are saying it is very, very critical for you to choose the speakers coming to your camp very carefully because not all speakers believe in, the, in discipleship. Not all preachers believe in discipling uh, young people. They believe in talking to them, exciting them. It is him ministering. But us, it is not us ministering. We want to see the young people carrying out the work of Christ 
among their peers. So how do you, de how do you develop a theme in the camp? The first step to develop a theme in the camp, for your camp is to pray for guidance. Because what is a theme? Theme is what is in the heart of God. And you cannot get it through your mind. It cannot get a theme by on, on a round table taking tea. Theme and topics are what is what does God want to speak? So you have to seek him. We have spent around two months praying for the theme of next year. To speak to us, the theme for next year. I think the theme we have the theme we have this year arise and answer the call took us several months. And we are trusting the Lord for this. So seek God's wisdom for a theme that addresses the spiritual needs of the students. What is it God wants to address? That's the theme. And then consider the current year's focus. Build on the KCF theme for the year or the challenges students face in their faith journey. Actually, the council passed that the theme we have for the year will be the theme in the camps. So we don't expect camps to generate their own themes for now. Uh, you will work uh, the theme, running theme, because not all students come to national convention and we expect the theme to run even in the schools or uh, make it uh, a point of them because the spirit we are developing this year is people to arrest and answer the call and we are using the we are using the example of John who ran away. And the question we are asking, what happened? What could have happened to Nineveh if Jonah didn't go to Nineveh? So what is happening to students, to our ministry, because people are not answering that? You can arise, but fail to answer the call. Because Jonah arose, but he didn't answer the call. So many brothers, they arise to organize camps, but they never, they will never fulfill God's call. Incorporate scriptures. So the theme must be from the scriptures. Ensure the theme is rooted in biblical teaching. You're not getting a, a, a mission and a vision for a, for, a, for a company. You are getting a theme, what is in the heart of God, and you want to communicate that. And therefore, make the theme relatable. Choose themes that resonate with students' everyday life. That is a guide on how to come up with a theme. And the other fourth thing I want to look at, I will not take much time, how to come up with topics reflecting in the theme. Number one is you need to break down the theme, identify key aspects of the theme, and explore different angles. So when you are coming up with a theme, your theme should break it down. And what is the book teaching? Break it down. The past that leads to students, past that leads to, to service, that's, that leads to faithfulness, whichever. Then from there, you derive your topics. So that's one way you can get topics. And then go for topics which address students' needs. Select topics that speak to students. Uh, to, to the student's spiritual growth, challenges in schools, peer pressure, global youth culture. Of course, those are the things uh, which the young people are battling. How do I balance the media, social media, YouTube, Netflix? A young girl asked me, is it really possible to stay from the phone? Is it really possible to overcome the temptation of holding the phone all the time? Those are the questions they have. And uh, your topics need to address, be relevant to what is happening. Then that topic, you need to incorporate practical teaching. Topics should be action-oriented. Teaching students how to live out their Christian faith in real situations. It is not theory. Practically, 
how can a young girl, a young boy, live among the Muslim community? If you go to Isiolo, brethren, they are struggling. I was told in a school there were only two Christians, population of a thousand students. Two Christians, two Christian students. And then with the seal patron, there were three. So one one of the associates who is mobilizing the work in Isiolo went to the school and they order Bible study guides every year. So he took the Bible study to the school and told the seal patron and the two students, you are a church. You are complete. Do the work. So you need to train them. How do you live in a real practical situation where CU is a bother to the administration? whether the domination now are taking over the schools, how, do, how, do they, how does the young student live in such a situation? Engage the speakers. Meaning, after getting the topics, you need to give content guide to speakers where you give them your expectations. Uh, when, they, when you invited me, I was given a letter with a guide most speakers, some speakers think they are the people who they think they hear God. So you give them a topic. Once you have given them a topic, somebody can mute uh, the noise there. Yeah. Once you have given them a topic, they tell you that as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me. So he has his own topic. Yet you told him what to do. So you engage the speakers to ensure that they understand the topic from your, from your perspective and give them a guide on how to deliver that topic. Because even yourself, when you chose the topics, you prayed. And therefore, a speaker cannot come and tell us uh, when he was praying, God spoke to him. Even at us, when we were giving you the topic, we prayed. They need to know that. So for you to deliver on that topic, I think you need to engage the speakers. It is very, very critical and very, very important for, for us to do this. Uh, that was number four. Number five, we are saying, uh, number five, uh, let me just check if um, I've handled that. Well, I didn't do the PowerPoint because of time, but uh, you just follow the notes, I know. Which times must be in a KCF camp program? Um, I understood this to mean what should be the content? What should be in a KCF camp? What should the program look like in a KCF camp? All KCF camps must have morning devotions. To start the day with prayer, scripture reflection. It is guided. So one, before the student do anything, they can gather in the hall or they can uh, do privately, but there must be a training on personal quiet time. Not just during the camp, but the student must leave your camp knowing the importance of quiet time, the importance of devotion, the importance of listening to God, the importance of studying the word. And that reflection, they need to do. So camp is part of that training, should be in all KCF camps. There must be Bible study. I'm using the word master. I'm not saying should. All KCF, what distinguish KCF camp from any other camp is Bible study sessions. Meaning there will be Bible exposition done. Then students are divided into groups and they study the book. Uh, and, 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 and this is very, very important where students can discuss now the, the, the book to understand how to expose a book. So exposition in KCF camp is not just somebody coming to expose and show knowledge of the Bible, but exposition in KCF camp should be to help students and motivate them and show them how to do expository study of the Bible. So somebody should take them carefully, not just give them knowledge, history, 
who wrote the book, those are important. But the skill we are looking for is, can the student leave our hands to study, to understand the Bible? And that's why that is followed closely with the Bible study uh, sessions in groups. And when you divide the student in a group, make sure no group has more than 10. Maximum number is 10. So before the Bible study, maybe at the preparation of the camp, you need to first get the Bible study leaders and train them what it means to lead small Bible study so that you, they are not going there to preach. We normally have a problem in our national convention where even teachers who lead the Bible study groups, they preach or they take time sharing their own, their own life and they dominate those Bible study groups. We don't want that. We want the student to be led, to be facilitated, to answer questions, facilitated to react, facilitated to understand and share their own experience. So Bible study is a tool we use to equip students. There should be workshops and teachings uh, focus on key topics like leadership. We normally have peer-to-peer -peer ministry. In the all in our national convention last year, you know, this year, there were sessions where we just focused on LGBTQ. LGBTQ we had workshops on LGBTQ where students were group, some of we were there, and they were answering questions from a, a guided. We made that. So your camp should be more strategic. So if you have workshop, not just the P2P P P goes on, Bible study goes on, and you can also choose some topics which you know are, are a challenge to the young people. And then use teachers in those groups to guide the students. If it is it's something like cults and occult, the students sharing their experience, how they handle it in their school, how they faced it in their communities, in their villages. And this can be a great learn, 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 learning point because the student ministry is student uh, 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 leading students. The student sharing, this peer share, uh, student ministry is other Christian showing students how to follow Jesus Christ. That's what a high school ministry is all about. There should be worship and praise. Therefore, the worship and praise must be differentiated from the common entertainment going on. We live in a culture of dancing where when the praise is going on, there are a group of students stand there, they dance, gyrate their waist. And when you study well, the students of the hall don't, are not now singing. They are now watching the dancers. So worship uh, and praise must be carefully coordinated to ensure that students are worshiping God. The students are praising God. There are no distraction. Funny dancing in those hall distract worship. So the one in charge of the person in charge of worship and associates must be careful not to have some entertainment in the hall. You are showing students how to praise and how to worship God. And they must learn that to go and practice in their schools so that you're not creating dance halls and people twerk and gyrate their waists in the service of God. Uh, so that is important for you as a leader to determine the level of control you put so that you eliminate anything that will remove people's focus from God and focus them to praising God. Then there's evening reflections where you can have a revival. You could still have quiet time in that evening and a personal time to reflect. Actually, evening should be People reflecting how the sessions have been the whole day uh, take students through prayer. I know the culture which was in KCF and we are trying to eliminate is they think that evening prayers, evening service 
is to keep students until 12 of midnight. So bring someone who is going to talk about Holy Spirit, talk about some fire from heaven. Students fall down, they cry on the floor. And uh, some few girls or some few boys are rolling on the ground and the rest of the students are seated watching them. And the speaker keeps the rest of the students in the hall at a time they are going to sleep. We advise leaders that sessions, even in sessions, should end at 10. Because even there in their schools, they sleep at 10. So if you bring a speaker who believes that students must shout, they must fall down, they must go to sleep at 12 midnight, we are not being fair. So bring, if you, it is a matter of prayer, uh, uh, just coordinate it well so that uh, we are not we are not uh, overdoing anything. Testimonies should be part of it where students share their experience how the campus impacted them, their Christian life. So you need to have uh, testimonies whereby students differentiate between testimony and presentations. What we normally have, our students are good at presentations. That's not our ministry. Ours, we must grow students to differentiate between presentation and testimony. So if you come to your camp, we should hear students doing more of testimonies than presentation. And then program you are leading should be student-led. We don't expect uh, in KCF camp you to bring a worship team from your church or hire some praise and worship team in the name of that, in the name that they are coming with equipment, in the name that, you know, they are specialists. We don't believe in that. We believe that students in the camp, we raise worship team from there, we raise press team from there, and students lead the program with the guidance of the associates. And you know what is facing us in the ministry is majority of our associates are now pastors. And the temptation they are facing is to run a KCF camp the way they run their churches. So you'll find this man, you've given him to be in charge of the program. He does everything. After the speaker, he comes and stress a point. He's the one who sings. He's the one who coordinates and dominates. Now, you have to be very careful as the county chair that to get people to understand the ministry. That you as a programmer, your work is to facilitate. And you facilitate through creating room for the student to run their programs. We want to fill the students in the camp. And uh, associates are there, yes, for guidance, but they, we want to feel that it is a student camp. That's why it is called Kenya Students Christian Fellowship. So how do you prepare budget for your camp? Some of the items which need to be in the, your budget is accommodation. But let me tell you something which is not in these notes. So the first thing in accommodation is the negotiation for the venue. So a team must identify the venue, send a delegation to meet with the principal, and negotiate the cost of that venue. List down all the items you'll need the school to give you. Because one the problem we normally face in our camps, the chairman went with another brother. They met the principal and said, we want to use the, the venue. People will say, yes. How much do you want to pay? They tell you you'll pay us 50 shillings per day, per, per delegates. But when you start running the camp, you realize the all the classrooms are locked and you need to use them. What they opened for you was only the dome. 
the domes. The hall is not available. Kitchen, you have a struggle. So the first thing you do before you go to, to negotiate a venue, list everything you will need. Generator, mattresses, classrooms, ningapi utatumia, kitchen, workers of the school, utataji nani na nani, all that you list down. Generator, when there's no power, water, firewood, except the things you want to buy. Then you are clear that CC to Talipa Veni will buy our own food, will be the cooks, avoid the arrangement where the school feeds you. The experience we have is not very good, where the school is the one buying food and feeding you. The experience we have over the years has never been conducive to KSF. So avoid those ones. So now the venue. Then when you are talking with the principal, you make minutes. Write a letter to him. That letter you ask him to respond. Now, once you do that, that will be very, very good. Then meals. Plan for the two meals a day. And snacks for students if you can afford. There are some camps they give students tea at 10. I found, I found several camps. They give break, breakfast, then they also serve tea at 10. Now, I want to try ten or six. There are some camps which I found out. While some camps I also found where they give students breakfast in the morning, what and what a supper, a laugh or cole, Johnny, dinner, they will eat lunch and then they, they take supper in the evening. Whatever is convenient for you, uh, speakers, where you will come, what they will eat. And also have a, well, have a space how you take care of your associates. It's very easy to concentrate on the students, forget the associates. Associates must have a room. They must be served where they are trained, if you can. So budget for those meals. The transport, local running. Somebody will be going to the market to get food. Associate is using his vehicle. Until, unless he tell you, e Gary, Nita Fuel as a contribution, as my contribution to the car. Don't take advantage of a brother. Once he has given you a vehicle, please plan the fuel. How to fuel that car? Those are things you budget for. If you are going to ferry students from one venue to another, plan for the buses. And how much fuel you're going to give. I don't think local camps have not seen you uh, ferrying the buses, but nationally, we normally ferry students to other venues to sleep. Materials like Bible study guides, peer-to-peer -peer materials, notebooks, pens, other stationery, plan for that. Plan for speakers' accommodation. Expositors, token, honorariums. And then you need also to plan for sound equipment. Sound equipment, uh, the PS system, those need to be unless you, the team has, then you remove that from your cost. Create emergency fund for unexpected expenses. Uh, plan for head office uh, support. We, we we pass in the council that every delegate in our camp support the office with the one hundred. So what you do once you have calculated your costs. You add 100 shillings so that you don't tell the office, Kwamba, hey, to the end of Kwadeni, Naomba Mutuambe, Pana, we don't offer prayers for people with debt. Plan and send us the 100 bob per delegate. And you ensure you bring the old type uh, because we know Ananias failed to bring the whole type. And what happened to him? Not, I'm not threatening you. I'm only using that as an example. Plan for pre-camp expenses. Hire of seats. If the seats, the school. And these are the negotiations you need to do. You're going to use seats. Yes, surely. You need to put that in your request. And the principal knows that Nikipiana Shule and Nikipiana Viti. Because some camps, you go there and the principal tells you, no, 
hizo viti lazima you hire and then you are stranded on the opening day so get it clear that are the seats enough from the school if they're not enough are you going to add more budget for that fumigation and cleaning you know kuna mashule ziko na bed bugs prepare the place don't bring people where the bed bugs and then you skin preaching to them even Paul suffered why are you not suffering you didn't bring people there to suffer plan well so that you make domes clean get the workers to clean the door no no dawa to get the place make it conducive for students and associates to to, to live in get generator and buy fuel you no know, there's a time we, we were in a convention na fuel ikaisha a generator was there but brethren did not plan for the fuel and there was blackout usik then these brethren want to go and look for petrol around all petrol stations were closed so even if if you have a generator get fuel ready so that any time the power goes off you don't start praying and binding the devils which are not there air time and printing photocopying costs the chairman and people are communicating are you going to give them some air time so that they communicate easily somebody running the program those are decisions you make security the security for the school which you need to pay are you going to hire additional security guards from a company uh, school workers how many do you need the problem normally have in our camps is that you go to the kedares and the kedares is the one who determines the workers you need to determine the power the workers you need according to how much you should pay and negotiate the cost mapema meet the workers and say this is what we can afford i remember when we were in kitui the chairman told the workers of the school that you know we can do without you we can get other workers to come and cook for us because those workers were troublesome so when they had that they can be replaced they worked and they continue working and the camp was able to run so take charge of the, of the negotiation the school is not doing you a favor know what you need and determine it early enough we normally advise that don't trust the school workers they have they have a system where they siphon food out of the stores so however much you want to trust them have your own person to manage your stores have your own person to control the food in the store kazi yake ni kukaa hapo kila siku all the time one of the national convention we went and uh, the kataras was releasing 19 tea bags the packet the packet the tea packet the whole packet not just the bag the whole packet 19 of them so when our associate went one day she was she's wondering how can you be using 19 packets of tea leaves then she said I'm, i'm going to do it myself today she only used two yet they were buying 19 they were using 19 every day so have a much you trust those cooks have your own associates to manage because you also want to manage costs flyers posters banners if you want to do video coverage photography production the whole process uh some these are some of the, the few cost uh, and you can add money many more because you know the dynamics of your of your of your what of your camp so how do you arrive at the cost let me tell you the the common thing we do as leaders we sit as a team and we say this camp will charge 800 So normally our camps start by fixing the camp fee. But that's another way of doing it. The best way to do it is determine the total cost first. You are saying how many students are we planning for? And you know 
at planning stage, we normally make very uh, very serious de decisions. So somebody say, this time the kind of mobilization we're going to do, we are going to have 800 students. Yet the last time, the last year's camp they had, there were 250. So you want to move from 250 to 800. Then you begin to say, we are going to do this. We are going to get these 800 students. But in reality, when the students come, they are not 250, they are 200. And they go and buy food items for 800 students. So this is what we advise. The first, be realistic. Be realistic in your planning. So if last time you went to 250, please budget with 200. If they come more, the better. Number two, once you determine the number, Sit down and calculate cost ya kufid mtoto moja ni ngapi. Transport ni ngapi, you allocate those costs. Then you take the cost per student. You multiply with the expected number. Then you will now get to what the, what the students can pay. So you cannot start by fixing the cost. You start fixing the fee. You start by the cost, the number of students. Then from there you can get the number of the students. Also, you consider sponsorship. So once you realize that the, the, the amount the students going to pay is so high, then you can also overcharge the students. Because if you start saying they are going to pay 3,000, they will not come. So you need to go back in your account, go back to the brethren, go back to churches, talk to the school to donate some food, and then you keep the cost of the, of the camp very, very that's what I'm saying. Ensure affordability. Keep fees within a reasonable range to encourage participants, especially for students from less privileged background. So don't make a camp for the rich. Make a camp which will ensure. That's why the associates must give. I, I, I when I was when I was the regional chairman, two o five, we held the first national convention hosted by Greater Nobu region. And then I was the chairman. We didn't have money to host the national convention. And office, the office didn't have money. So we did, we did two things. One, we tasked ourselves to raise money. We, our target was to raise the committee was target, targeted to raise 200,000. And a lady from Kit, she passed away called Lois Maura, was part of the team, part, part of our planning team. She lent the fellowship 100. She went to a, to a cop and gave us good money, 100,000. So the rest, we were only five people. So the rest of us raised the 100,000. But we also said, associates, all associates were to pay their convention fee whether they are coming to the convention or not. So those years, there was no question of me, 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 let our total. Why should I pay? Paying for the camp fee was mandatory, whether you are coming to the camp or not. So we got money from those. So what I'm saying is, and those monies we got, you help us to run the national convention. And we agreed as the planning team that we're not going to ask the head office, then Reverend Makeo was the general secretary. We said we are not going to ask Reverend Makeo to refund to us the money, because this was our support to the convention. And so you need to have brothers who are not going to demand for, for refunds. They, you need to train people on how to serve God and see the national, the, the camp, sorry, see the camp as opportunity for us to invest in God's kingdom. So how do you pick 
Well, who are the people you should have? You should have a camp director. Normally, this should be the county chair to be the overall in charge. Uh, this person sees, oversees the entire camp, must be a mature Christian with strong leadership and organizational skills. That's a serious quality you need to look at. Somebody who's going to oversee this. Because if, if you have a camp director who is easily offended, easily becomes angry, he will, he will throw the thing there and go to his home. So get somebody mature, somebody who can bear the yoke and carry the burden of others and still survive without saying, I'm not going to come back to this team again. You need a treasurer or financial controller. This guy handles the finances. So the camp director cannot be the treasurer. The county chairman cannot be the one handling money. Because who will ask you about the money? Get someone else to handle the money, and that's the treasurer. This person must have the accounting skills, the ability to handle finances. He can track expenses. This is the person who should keep give you red light and say, Apa, to tie that deficit if you don't manage well. Must be somebody who is able to trace the things which you have bought yesterday. Sinatomika Aji. And so you are able to manage the, the, those supplies. The person who is able to collect fee, there are some camps which you, brethren, a brother collected fee, Pesek Apotea. There's a camp with lots of things, 100,000. Why don't you have students to pay directly to your bank account? That's what you are struggling with, even nationally. Having all monies put in case of pay bill. So have a pay bill to collect money. So that you only deal with papers. But have a treasurer. You need to have a program coordinator. And this person plans and schedules all camp activities. This person requires creativity and good time management skills. And this person must be able to manage the student program associate program, a SAT program, and SAT school program. He's the head, but now he coordinates other programmers because he cannot run the four. So you must have somebody with the delegation skill, somebody who's not domineering, is not hands off, neither is, is domineering, is in charge, but he knows how to lead through people. That's the person you need to run the program. And that's a challenge in our fellowship. You need to have counselors, spiritual mentors, who can counsel students. One of the things we don't allow is caning or beating students in our camp. You cannot have somebody in charge of, of the security who beats students, slaps them, chain them. Students' problem they have is to refer them to counselors. Uh, these people who are in charge of counseling in our camps should be spiritually mature and experienced in mentoring students. Choose them carefully. These people, the people who are going to run these camps, please, 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 choose them carefully. Uh, it's very, very important for you to do that because failure, You, these are the people who are uh, going to enable you to manage the camps well. Or failure also at the camp is dependent on how you are managing this. And also others like uh, you need somebody in charge of accommodation, you need registration team, people are able to capture data well, people are able to analyze data. Most of the problem, problem we have in the fellowship, after the activity, we can't get the data. So you need to you need to have a file. The team need to have a file called camp file. And that camp file has the financial report, has registration in terms of the number of students, their contacts, the contacts of their parents, 
and a, it is a file which you hand over when you are leaving so that there's a team camp file. Anybody can go back five years and find what was happened and can trace. Uh, those are important uh, people I felt we need to have them. The next thing is what are the committees to have? Committees we can have. I was asked that also to talk about this one. Um, you need a program committee, depending on the large, with the number, with, the, with the, your camp. Develop the daily schedule, select topics, invite speakers. There's a team which, which should be doing that. They don't have to be, they could just do two, two or three people. You know, finance committee manages the camp budget, fee collection, and payment it should be done by a committee. Gather the chairman. Usiwe wende unabeba pesa kwa mfuko. You will get confused. You will not trace whom you are paid. So let there be an office where it is referred. The guy must record the money given. People sign. There must be a way to control the purchases so that you don't buy. The problem in our fellowship, I can tell you, is overbuying. There's an excitement of buying things. But what can we say? Before the convention, just buy things enough for two days. Then at the end of the two days, you analyze and find do you have more students or less? Then you adjust your purchases based on the number of the students. So that once the camp is over, you don't have so much food remaining on the in the store. And the suppliers are not willing to take them back. You still have to pay for them. That is not good stewardship. That's not prudence. Therefore, budget well. You need a finance team well equipped to help you with that. Um, you have welfare, welfare committee, and trust that students' needs, including health, accommodation, meals, are taken care of. Students eating on time, the cooks are not on strike. Uh, that welfare team should be able to coordinate. Students are complaining about food. There's too much water in the in their tea. You don't have to wait for students to complain. You can sense that, Mapema, and then go and find out. If the budget the Kedares gave you is that 10 liters of milk to feed the, the students to make tea, how comes in it is, it is not enough? Maybe the person supplying the milk and don't get some much. Or Iomaziwa is not all going through the tea. Somebody and I make us again. So you need to monitor that. You need somebody to monitor. Is this guy bringing you the correct meal? Come at the supplier and I'm guess a match. You better go to the to the shop and buy um, the packet meal. Change the system so that we don't have an issue. So we need a team like that. Protocol team in charge of visitors, speakers, uh, the measure soundness. A protocol person who cares yake nikuka as kids a speaker and a preaching in. They are good speakers. There's a time in our convention we brought a very well-known guy to speak to students. In the process, he spoke his own things. So I was, I was, our associates came, leaders came to share with me what the guy was teaching. I said, well, how come? I didn't know his doctrine had changed. So even good speakers, in the course of time, their doctrine can change. So somebody must sit there to ensure that what the student is receiving is well measured, is accurate, is doctrinally sound, and, uh, and, 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 and biblically based. You need somebody, that protocol team, because they are the people who receive the visitors, they need also to listen to what the speaker is, is saying to the students. Logistic committee, this coordinate transport, accommodation, camp setup, tent, kamaiko, the cleanness of the hall. Uh, uh, the, this, this guy is should be in charge of 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 us discipline committee i've already said i've already said we don't allow caning we don't allow beating in our camps because even caning is not allowed in the schools we cannot uh make sure you as leaders you ensure the team in charge of discipline uh they just ensure order at the areas to camp rules but they also guidance and counseling there's prayer where you can get us media and as a committee 
you have somebody to be in charge if you are going to we are going to see that but maybe you are you want to live stream this onto your facebook page you, you need a media team to do that you need somebody to coordinate your photography you need somebody to tell this the guy taking photograph what kind of photo photos you need because most of the time we get photos we cannot even use documentary you want to interview the students what kind of interviews do you need do you have a guide to do that so that the students are, are guided on what to say so that you get the results you need you need some media team to help you uh, be able to do that and then uh, i'm about to finish uh, in a few slides here what are the indicators of success for a kcf camp Number one is spiritual growth. Students demonstrate increased knowledge of scripture. That's why at the end of the camp, you need to develop forms to evaluate the students. That evaluation form should also have commitment. What are the students committed to go and do? And uh, uh, so spiritual growth is one of them. Are the students becoming better leaders? That one is something you can measure and find out. Uh, what are the feedback like through the form of said students and associates express satisfaction with the camp experience? In fact, I, when I came to camp, I, 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 some of those camps I asked the students, do you want to go home? They told me no. When do you want to go home? It is by another one week. Many of the students were satisfied. Many of the students were getting what they came there for. And uh, so positive feedback is part of an indicator that the KCF can be successful. Commitment to evangelism, students committing to go and evangelize and witness uh, to their students. I'm saying here, students live with a renewed desire to share their faith and live out Christian values. That is a success camp. Effective financial management. What KCF camp will only succeed also if there's a proper financial management system in the camp which ensures the students are getting what the what you spend the money on because as long as you can spend money there's a camp we manage somewhere as office headache to an online bull our bull was bought and the bull was feeding i think less than 300 people but still it was not enough so when we went around, our staff went around to check. The cook wants to carry it off. But you see, you spend money on it. So there must be a system to ensure that bull and boil in is being used by the students, is feeding the students, you not know, feeding people who are working there. So you need to ensure that financial management is the intended purpose and this is what's done. And then, uh, and then, uh, so these are important uh, commitment to evangelism and effective financial management. You must have records, how money is received, how it was spent. So you, as the chairman of the county or the sub county, whichever, you must take charge that financial records are clear, uh, proper records are maintained, there's proper contability, and you can trace every payment. And every money received, you can you can uh, retain that. My thing is going off, but I don't have a, a charger for it. What to consider when inviting speaker? What do you consider when inviting speaker? Look for spiritual maturity. Ensure speakers are biblically sound. Have a strong personal walk with Christ. Go for soundness. The world we live in is full of speakers who teach their own things. In KCF camp, you scrutinize carefully. Now, and pay attention to this. Do not go to a speaker because he's famous. Do not go for title. Don't bring a speaker because he's on the TV. It should be relevant. And then engagement. Choose speakers who can connect with young people and make the message relatable, not comedians, neither entertainers. Thematic alignment, what I'm calling thematic alignment, is ensure the speaker's message aligns with the company. 
understand and appreciate the work. The speaker must understand and appreciate the work of KSE. There are so many speakers who want to speak in our camps, but they don't appreciate the work of KSE. Nationally, we have eliminated them. Avoid speakers with competing interest. This speaker comes to the camp, is running another youth program or student ministry in schools, independent from KSE. So he wants to talk to the associates, give them some forms to register, request them to allow him to go to schools behind your back. So any speaker who is running a student program in schools, avoid them. Because we have had problem with speakers uh, or, 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 or groups of people, they are running ministry, is running a church, and you want to use the forum of KCF to mobilize associates to join his church. That one, you have to be careful. Get speakers from KCF database. That's what I'm saying. That they say is very, very important to get speakers from KCF database. Uh, and we can get you speakers. National Convention, we normally have so many speakers. I don't know. We are, they are not even enough. And we have never sent you speakers there who bring confusion. So get from your wealth, get people who pass through KCF, former leaders, and get people out there. How can we embrace ICT in our camps? Online registration. You can use digital platforms for student registration. You can do live, spring, live streaming, broadcast key sessions online for those who cannot attend in person. Why don't you connect to Zoom? Connect to Facebook. Connect to YouTube. Social media engagement. Use platforms like WhatsApp, Facebook to keep students engaged before, during, and after the camp. Run a KC Facebook page. Mobilize using that. Forms for feedback. Collect feedback digitally to improve future camps. Those are ways you can use uh, social media, uh, engage in media. Do not be so a cake. Show the students you are digital. You understand their world by applying some of these things. What factors are critical in the centralization of camps? This, I think, uh, concerns the county now are creating sub counties to run their own camp. What do you need to consider? You see, one, when you went the blockway, you remember the blockway? That had to be approved by the, by the, we had that good idea, but the council had to approve it. So I expect that if you are going to do a camp as a sub county, you must get approval from the county. The county need to get involved. The leadership need to sanction that. The, the camp, the place where you have, should be accessible. Ensure venues such that students from different schools can attend. Local leadership empower sub county leaders to plan and execute camps according to the approved standards by the council. So that training of local leadership is very important, and this is why this training I think is important because these people want to do camp in a way that is in line and in tandem of the fellowship. Uniformity, maintain consistency in the teaching content and overall camp experience. P2P, team, book of exposition, adopt the national structure. That's what we have given you all over our national, our camps are run and the model we have is usually the national convention. Financial consideration, camp fee to be considerate, not for profit. Don't do a camp to have money. Do a camp to meet the student need. If you have surplus, good, but you don't have to have a surplus. Make sure that it's not profit making. Can KCF camp organizers resource funding? I say big yes. Camp organizers can partner with churches, corporate sponsorships, approach Christian owned businesses or organizations for sponsorship to sponsor the students. Individual donations, that's how I've already said that. Grant applications, apply for grant from Christian organizations like World Vision, Compassion. Those are agreed. So look for funding outside your team to reduce the cost of the camp. That is very, very important. And you have so many avenues. As long as what you need, we are, I'm working on uh, corporate governance. And one of the, the things we are looking at is partnership. How can KCF partner? And that one will come out, the, how you assess a partner before that. But for now, you start with 
strategies for mobilizing students and also how do we mobilize students? Use peer-to-peer -peer invitations. Why? What are we saying? Let the student themselves in a school help you to mobilize. They see you to come. Use the student leader to go and mobilize. Use school visits. Send SMF. Their brother who have introduced themselves here as SMF. Use them. Facilitate them to go to schools. Talk to Tetron uh, and field, you know, uh, all that. Use social media campaigns. Use platforms popular with students, such as WhatsApp. During the COVID, we group, counties group students in WhatsApp. And we used to send Bible study in those groups and students will discuss. Create student WhatsApp group so that when they go home, you can follow. Early registration in incentive. You can say that the camp fee is a thousand, but if you register by this time, you only we you have a three hundred waiver. Those ones you can also do. You can use letters to parents, see you patrons. Write letters inviting. Write write letters to parents, and we have done that many times. Telephone parents, meaning have database telephone numbers of parents. The CU person should have telephone numbers, parents of the CU members. Then he or she can call the parent and say, do you know we have a camp for your daughter, for your son? Then a teacher calling a parent, that parent will believe in you and they will pay and bring the student. So before the students go home, make sure that you have the contacts of the parents and then somebody is there. You are person is calling the teachers, have you called your parents, have you called your parents? And some associates are doing it so well, whereby we had, when I was when I was in, in, in Wamba, Wamba is in Sambur, this is August. I found the brethren had organized a camp at Wamba. And naturally, they would have organized that camp in Marala. But Wamba, Marlal to Wamba is about 100 kilometers on a road that looked like a road. It's not a road. And they had 500 students in Wamba. One teacher told me that he teaches at Lolmorok Secondary School. Lolmorok is at the border of Samburu and Pokot. That's where Bandit takes root every day. The schools are ever closed. So this brother told me that, you know, my boys will come in the morning and tell me, Mwalimu Leo, we are not coming to class. Tunashika bunduki, we are tunano kupigana na wapokot. Then they come back to class. Where there is no road, there is no school, we Mwalimu ali mobilize 74 students to Wamba. From the school to Wamba is about 50 kilometers. To Maralal, then from Maralal to Wamba is another 100 kilometers. So you need to use tricks. It is working in very remote areas. We had over 200 students in Moyale, uh, in a Muslim dominated. So I don't expect Kambi uh, and Yandaro to Kuja to party less than 200. Go mobilize the students and get many to come. Use strategies which work. Do a, doc a documentary where you can, which you can share to parents and have students talk in that documentary and students themselves are inviting students to the camp. Those are, those are things you can do, brethren. Yeah, to Malaysia, very soon. What factors are critical in decentralized camp here in Mesema? KCL camp funding here to Mesema. I love for to Malaysia and strategies to Mesema. How to pick camp officers People are going to work in your camp. Look for commitment to the vision of KC. Look for people who are spiritually mature. Working with the mature people, they will leave the camp before they come because they are offended. They cannot contain. Look for people with organizational skills. People can organize. People can respond to issues. People can give advice. So it's not about your friends. It's about the quality. People are able to do teamwork. They were able to work as a team. You no, know, somebody's gone there. They are rebellious. They are not listening to anybody else. Look for people who can work as a team. But finally, this is very important. This last section I want to dwell on. Number one, what to remember. When you prepare for a, a camp, please don't start by preparing to host people. Start by preparing your heart. 
your heart more than for the people. Before you think of where people are going to sleep, before you think of what they're going to, 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 to eat, which speakers to come, examine your heart. Prepare your heart. And one of the things you do when you want to manage people, you build a large heart. A heart which is able to absorb injustices, insult, complain, and you still survive. So preparing to lead people is to prepare first of all your heart to lead your heart. Number two, establish clear accountability structure. Their brethren, Amba Wakonam Skumawiki, Ama Kabech, Ama Waru, and Angalia Yokamb, ni place your market and business. Put it very clear how supplies will be made to that camp. What criteria will you use? You respect whether you are the chairman of the camp, you are the regional chairman, you are the general secretary of the camp. How are you going to handle that accountability? Ability. Agree that. Then put a system that will capture data correctly. Things which you have bought are well recorded. The way they you were bought from the from the market, Villa Silingia store, records are clear. Villa in a leaf store to, to the to the to the kitchen or to wherever the, the Bible study guide you printed, who is in custody, how many were done. How are they being released to the students? That capture of data, you need to put that system in place carefully. And then you need to delegate only to those who have proven loyalty to the fellowship. The guys who are not using the forum you are to build a ministry so that patrons can call him directly. We have heard that in our national convention. The man is so busy. Come in the process and achukwao. And I took contact. Now, after two years of convention, you don't see them. Now he's running his own YouTube page somewhere with the data he collected from, from, the, from the forum. Get people who the only interest they have is to serve God through the ministry of case here. No any other interest. And then you need to put a structure in that camp of consist, constant meetings for review. Let people meet every evening. Let key departments meet. Let somebody say, my program was this, kitchen was like this, food delayed, why? How are, you going to, how are you going to amend that? How are you going to respond to that in the following day? So that you don't have a problem consistently arising in the, in the camp. It is very frustrating to the, to the students and does not give you a good name. So they need to be a response team that work now. Timely response. Develop a system where you can respond to issues very fast. A student is sick. Where's the dispensary? The nurse in the school is not there. You must look for a place where the student can be. So a quick response, timely response to issue. There's going to be delay in food in during, during lunch because there's no water. How do you mitigate that timely so that we don't have program in Asia, Kwa Hall, Chakula is not ready. How do you manage that? So you need somebody and, and your team on, on that response me mechanism that makes sure that there's no delay on any part. The program is ended. The program is not the one preaching another sermon. Preach as I preach, I'm going to be a watu. This brother comes in and says, now we want to pray properly. As if that prayer, that they have said that guy did not pray properly. Once the Mubiri I will preach na meombia watoni, release them to the next program. And finally, finally, bridge. Bridge the expectation gap. My better resolve. Bridge. Uh, I'll I'll log in to hear your comments through another 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 phone. But I'm saying bridge the expectation gap. Bridge the expectation gap. Make it clear. This camp, Mukimaliza, brother, don't stay around waiting to be appreciated. Make it clear that we are not going to pay anyone for this work. 
reduce or minimize expectation gap. If you supply anything, we will supply at the best price and all that is important to do. I want to stop there and I give me some few minutes to, to log into another using another 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 phone because my battery is off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, GS Joseph, for that quite edifying and also very detailed training. I believe members, you would appreciate that it was quite necessary and the training was actually very in-depth in matters camp. I had requested if you had any comment or especially a question, you would put it in the chat so that you're able to ask him to respond and also try manage time. Yes, uh, good evening all. I want to first appreciate uh, GS's presentation I'm almost feeling that uh, before any group organizes a question, the, uh, a camp, sorry, before any, any county or sub-county organizes a question, I think the whole organized uh, yeah, camp, thank you. <laughs> they should listen to this because it's very, very rich. And I, I think I was swallowing everything the GS was saying. Uh, now, my question to GS is, we have said we really avoid people who have uh, interests, other interests, uh, especially on using uh, KSA forum to build themselves up. Suppose, and then there is the issue of um, raising funds. Supposing somebody says, I will give you funds on condition that you give me uh, an opportunity to participate in your camp, maybe speaking or presenting something to do with your, um, with my organization. With my organization. Yeah, that's my yeah. question. Thank you. Can I answer? Yes, please. Uh, Dodingo, GS, before you say that, yes. eh, before you answer, GS? Yes, Kabuko, go, go on. I'm hearing you. Yeah, we had a guy who, who has a, a TV station. He wanted to advertise for our students. But at the same time, he wanted to recruit students for his own. Uh, for his own camp after our camp so you told him we are not interested you have to put your foot on the crowd it would have been good for us to get uh, tv adverts but uh, that was not his main it was not he was not interested in our function he wanted to make a name for himself so we told him we are not interested yes maybe a request as you respond to those two i find a this gentleman, William, had raised his hand. Kindly unmute and shoot so that we have the three and then the GS will respond. Is it William? I think so. Okay, GS, please proceed. I'll be tracing the hand. Yes, you are muted. We can't hear you. May I go ahead? Please go ahead. Respond to the talk. Thank you. Thank you. I think one part of that uh, engineer Kabubo has already answered. I think we, we have to be very careful. If we have churches like Sita that support KCF big time, uh, Victory Faith Church, but there's no time they have demanded for us to for them to participate in our activities. The lure normally is I bring a tent, I bring my instrument. Please give me a session. You have to be very careful because giving financially to the KCF does not does not mean you are a good minister that you understand students. 
And if somebody wants to support you with the strings attached, just do what Kabubu has done with his team. Don't involve people who put, who put, uh, what? Conditions. Attack. Who put a condition for their support? If they want to support the work of God, let them support. But, but also, don't show you are desperate for money. We are not. Because one, the students are paying for that camp. And number two, there are so many Christians organizations which can support. We work with World Vision in our camps, but there's no time the director or the people in charge of those programs have even requested us to give them sessions in our camps. So I'm normally very, very careful. If you put uh, a condition, then silently we will not involve you. And number two, someone who wants to use running, I mean, we have, we've stopped so many of them. He runs a, a high school ministry and he does not want to put that high school ministry under the leadership of the local team. Uh, we are careful as a fellowship not to invite such a person as a speaker because we do not know what he will do with the student. Um, and there are, and there are so many people who have come because of the influence our ministry has. Asante Sana. So I said, just take care of that. And also the third one, the notes I'll give to Gitao. Am I? Am I right? To share. So the notes are available. Uh, I'll forward them to Brother Gitao. Just make sure I have your WhatsApp so that, that you can some pass it to the members who are here. Much the notes are free, so I request Brother James Derito kindly give a vote of thanks and pray for us as we dismiss. James Derito, we are good and thank you so much, my my brother GS. That was comprehensive. Uh, that was very good and thanks even for taking trouble just to go through everything and we bless the Lord because of the grace upon your life. Let us pray. Our Lord, we want to appreciate you and to thank you. Uh, because, Lord, you have given us an opportunity to learn, to remind ourselves, to sharpen, to add to our knowledge uh, on issues to do with holding a camp, running a camp. And dear Lord, for as many as have listened to this, O oh God, I pray that you may continue guiding us, helping us in the name of Jesus, because this is one uh, strategy that, Lord, you have given us of reaching out, of developing leadership, leading um, young people to the Lord Jesus Christ, helping them, helping them to, to be established, to mature, uh, to teach them uh, what you have taught us. And we pray that, Father, in the name of Jesus, you shall help us, you shall fire us again and uh, revive us again, and help us again, even as we plan even to run camps in December and uh, months to come. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, you will keep sharpening all of us, that you will help us, that Lord shall go ahead of every student worker, even in this forum, and even uh, in Kenya. Father, we thank you, and we exalt you, even as we uh, dismiss, Lord. We ask that, Lord, you watch over all of us, and give us a Good night's sleep in the name of Jesus. And we continue praying for the national office so that uh, they, sh they shall uh, continue facilitating teams the way, um, the best way um, the teams um, should be facilitated. And we just want to thank you too, even for the council, the other leaders, the team leaders, and uh, regional leaders and workers all over that, uh, Lord, you shall cover us, that Lord, you shall give us the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that Father, in the name of Jesus, you shall revive our hearts, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.